What is up everyone? Welcome back to another Morales tutorial video in which we're going to look at how you can use Firebase Cloud Functions as a proxy API for your Morales API calls. Why this is so good is because you can use the backend servers of Firebase to store securely your Morales API key so it's not susceptible to attack on your own client-side applications. And also in the Cloud Function, after you make your Morales API call, you can process the results and only return to your client what the client needs. Here I've actually used the Morales get token price endpoint to create this cloud function to get any ERC20 tokens US dollar price on the Ethereum network. But of course, Morales has a ton of different endpoints for NFTs, blocks, tokens, DeFi. So you can use this tutorial for any of these Morales endpoints. And in the end, we'll also show you how to put it into a React app. So here, if I paste the Chainlink token address and get the US dollar value, we use our Firebase Cloud function to make that Morales API call and then receive the result of the current price of Chainlink tokens, which is $7.76. I hope this is exciting for you. If it is, stay stuck in and I'll show you how to build this. Hey, I'm Jay, your Morales instructor from beautiful Finland. I got into crypto in 2020, and I've been building in the space ever since. In my free time, I enjoy running and at the gym, and in the summer, you'll definitely find me at the golf course. Now, let's get stuck in and learn about Web3. Radio, to get you going, I'll assume you can already create a Firebase project of your own. We have one called Morales API Calls created over here, and you'll have to upgrade to the Blaze plan. So over here, you'll be initially on the Spark plan, but you have to upgrade to the Blaze pay-as-you-go plan if you want functioning cloud functions. Of course, even though it is pay-as-you-go, you'll only have to pay after a pretty large amount of requests. So effectively, when you're just testing it out, it will be free. But that's just a little note, so you have to be on the Blaze plan to make sure your cloud functions work as you deploy them online. So now jump into Visual Studio Code. And here I have a Firebase Morales repository open with a front end React app already built in, but that will be just to showcase our API functionality. Now let's go ahead and build our Firebase functions. So go ahead in the terminal and write sudo npm i g Firebase tools and enter it'll ask for a password after you provide your password it'll initialize firebase for you radio now that that's installed you can go ahead and log into firebase by running firebase login i'm already logged in but if you're not logged in it'll prompt you to your web browser where you can log in to the cli and now you're ready to initialize the project you've set up in your web browser already run firebase in it You'll get to choose the Firebase functionality you want to use so scroll down with your arrow keys press the space bar to select functions and then press enter then you can choose an existing project, yes, and we'll use Morales API calls. We'll set the language to JavaScript. We don't have to allow ESLint, and we want to install the dependence, so press Y and then enter. Beautiful. So now we have everything initialized over here in our IDE. We have this functions folder in our repository, which we want to edit the index.js file, which will have our cloud functions. So in our terminal, we'll have to CD into the functions folder. And to make sure that we can access Morales, we'll have to install Morales. So npm i Morales. Beautiful. So now Morales is installed for our Firebase cloud functions, and we can remove all the comments and go ahead and add Morales as a requirement for the script. So we create this variable called Morales, which is requiring Morales.default. Now let's go ahead and create our cloud function. And we do that by calling exports and then the cloud functions name like so. So now we have exports get price. So this is going to be our cloud function, which is asynchronous takes a request, and then we provide a response at the end of the function. All right. And because in this get price cloud function, we want to get the token price of a ERC20 token using Morales, we have to first initialize a instance of Morales inside this cloud function. So we do that by awaiting Morales to start and using our unique API key, there'll be a reference in the Morales documentation how you can get a Morales API key. But essentially, you just have to sign up for a Morales account and go get your API key from there. After we have the API key, we have to use the request parameters that were sent to this cloud function to see which address and chain are of interest to whoever is requesting to get the token price. Now to accomplish this, we can query the request object like so and we get a variable address and a chain. So when calling this cloud function, we have to make sure that as parameters, we pass a address and a chain, not two addresses. Now, after we have that, we can make a Morales API call. So let's go ahead and close down this terminal a little bit so we have more space. And over here, add our Morales API call. So we're storing it in this variable called response, and we're waiting the Morales EVM API token method to get the token price. And as parameters, for this API request, we're using the address and chain that were sent to this get price cloud function. And then all this stuff to do is respond 
to ever who's calling this cloud function with the response that we got from the Morales EVM API, like so. This is the bare minimum of how to use a cloud function as a proxy API. But now, as I said at the start, we're already securely storing our API key over here. Remember, you have to get your own API key. This is just going to be for demonstration purposes for this video. But now our response will be a large plethora of data that the Morales EVM API chucks towards us. But we can already simplify the response so our client only receives the information it needs, so the US dollar price. And we can also make sure that the user doesn't have to provide a chain address. They can only provide the address because we know that they're only looking for Ethereum network. So let's make those two changes now. And then we'll look at how we deploy this function and call it from our react app. Firstly, for the response, we know that the response has a raw format. And in the raw format, there is a USD price key. So we can store that in a USD variable. And then just make sure that rather than responding with the whole response, we'll only return the USD variable that we just acquired over in this line. So that's as simple as that. And now for the chain. So we don't want to query the chain, we can remove that. But then we have to have a way to ensure that we're using the correct chain. So Ethereum, so we can use EVM utils from the Morales package like so. So we get an EVM chain. And here, as we define the chain, we just set the EVM chain to be Ethereum. So that's two very quick changes on how you can process the data over here in your cloud function to ensure that your client side doesn't have to do it. And it only gets the response that it needs to be able to quickly render the client side information on the front end. So now that's it. Now we're ready to go ahead and deploy this function. So go ahead and open up your terminal once more. Let's go ahead and clear the contents for now. And then write Firebase deploy, and then write dash dash only functions as we only want to deploy the functions we've created now, and then press enter. And you see that Firebase starts to deploy these onto your Morales API calls Firebase project. This might take a while. So let's wait for this. And I'll come back after they are deployed. All right, that actually happened pretty fast. So now our cloud function get price is deployed at this address on our Firebase project. So now let's go ahead and open Google Chrome. So we have our Firebase project over here, I have the functions page open. So we can go ahead and refresh this page. And we should see the get price cloud function appear over here, it was just created and we have the address over here as well. So now what, what's left to do is go ahead and try and make a request to this using our react app to try and get the token price for any ERC 20 token stored on the Ethereum network. So jump back into Visual Studio code, we can go ahead and in the terminal because we have this front end folder, it'll be in the code repository in the link description if you want to check it out yourself, go ahead and press CD dot dot, and then jump into the front end folder CD like so, and then go ahead and install all the dependencies npm I let's at the same time check out our front end folder close out this terminal. And here we see that if we close the index.js, we have a source folder where we have app.js. It is a very simple app at all it has is search for our ERC 20 token, it has an input field, which changes the token variable, which has a token address for any ERC 20 token, the user can input, and then he has a search button, which runs the get USD function. And if we look at the get USD function over here, we're making a Axios request to our cloud function endpoint over here. And as the parameters, we're passing the address of the token that's set in the input field of the client side application. Finally, this get USD function sets the price variable to the data we get as a response from our cloud function. And because we set that USD variable as the only key, we take the USD variable and that should be our price, which we are then also displaying over here at the bottom of the page. So let's go check this out. Open up the react app by running npm run start. All right, and the react app should look something like this. So you can search for any ERC 20 token and get their USD value. So now let's go fetch a token address from etherscan. All right, so here on etherscan, let's search for for example, Chainlink. we get the Chainlink token, the price is $7.66. Let's copy that. And in our react app, paste it in here and get the USD value. And look at that $7.63. So of course, depending on which decentralized exchange we're using, we might get some variation in the price of the token. Now we can try this for another token. Let's go back into etherscan, we can search for, for example, Uniswap, get the Uniswap token, which has a price of $6.57, copy this token address, and here paste that into here. And what this is doing is we're sending that request to our Firebase Cloud function, 
which is handling all our Morales API requests and sending back to us the USD value of Uniswap, which is 657, exactly the same price that was on Etherscan. So that is how simple it is to use Firebase Cloud Functions as a proxy API for your Morales EVM API. For better practices, keep for better practices, keeping your API keys safe and responding with only the data that you need. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and you can find the repos that we used in this tutorial in the description below. So go check those out and I'll catch you in the next one.